In August 2008, NIST released their final report into the collapse of World Trade Center 7. They said that a girder between columns 79 and 44 had walked off its footing due to thermal expansion of beams in the building, which left column 79 laterally unsupported, allowing it to buckle and therefore causing the collapse of the building. To support this claim, NIST produced several models to illustrate their theory, which hinged on the claim that the buckling of a single column, column 79, had led to the total symmetrical collapse of this 47-storey high-rise steel building. In 2008, NIST addressed the shear stud issue in NC Star 1-9, stating that in World Trade Center 7, no shear studs were installed in the girders. But this contradicts directly with what NIST said in 2005, where they stated most of the beams and girders were made composite with the slabs through the use of shear studs. This is a crucial point to note because if the shear studs were used between these elements and the concrete that made up the floors, it is difficult to imagine how the alleged expansion could possibly have occurred. It is hard enough to imagine how the buckling of the single column could lead to the building collapsing so evenly at the rate that it did, but without this thermal expansion, this whole story as to why the building collapse is entirely unrealistic. So let's take a look at what some shop drawings for World Trade Center 7 state about the use of shear studs. This is drawing E1213, which is an interesting note regarding the shear stud issue. This particular note pertains to field applied shear studs. This means that it is referring only to those studs that are applied to the elements on site, rather than any that may have been applied prior to the steel's arrival. We can see that the amount of studs that are called for in any given piece of steel is indicated by the number contained within the greater than and lesser than type brackets. So now, with this in mind, let's take a look at the area around column 79 in this drawing. Straight away, you can see that there are shear studs called for in abundance around the elements that provide column 79 lateral stability. And indeed, this particular drawing calls for something nearing 3,900 field applied shear studs in a single level of this 47 storey structure. The piece of steel that this say walked off its footing is the element that is marked W33 by 130 and it links column 79 to the outer column marked 44. Here it is in the drawing S810 with 30 shear studs noted and here again on drawing S820 also calling for 30 shear studs to be applied. So what does all this mean in relation to the explanation that NIST gave us for the collapse of this building? What you have to ask yourself is this. Why would they first correctly state the abundance of shear connectors in this building and then change their story and omit these crucial elements from their collapse analysis and model? Perhaps the answer is this. Shyam Sundar, the lead investigative engineer at NIST, said in 2005 that NIST were having trouble getting a handle on the collapse of Building 7. After all, they had by this time blamed a variety of causes, such as diesel fuel fires and damage from the collapse of the towers. It wasn't until some time after this that they finally settled on the story of thermal expansion in and around Column 79. And thermal expansion to this extent Without shear studs, it's hard to imagine for the cause of this collapse. But with shear studs applied to these elements, completely encased in concrete, making the steel and the floors a composite and more rigid combined structural element of this design, thermal expansion to the degree required to suit their story is quite simply impossible.